Hey everyone, this is a video guide to using render distance manipulation in Minecraft speedruns. Um, this is still fairly new tech, so this isn't going to be a complete guide. Um, I just wanted to highlight uh, three examples where this can help you in speedruns and uh, show you kind of how and why these things work. Um, I'm pretty sure fairly soon we'll see some more ideas and strategies come out using these mechanics. So I'll try to keep the description below updated uh, with any new videos and ideas. Um, I like to jump straight into practical examples. So in this video, uh, first we'll go over how you can use render distance to help you out in ocean monuments, essentially freezing Elder Guardians, giving you a better chance of looting them. Uh, next, we'll talk about how you can use this in blaze fights to make your blaze fight a little easier. And last, we'll go over a technique called pearl hanging. Um, after that, I'll go over the explanation of how changing render distance affects mobs. Um, and then, of course, we'll end with some tips and tricks. So first off, huge shout out to Ninja Brain for discovering this. I'm linking um, his original two render distance monument video in the upper right. Um, I'm also linking his YouTube and Twitch in the description because uh, he's super smart and he's one of the top runners right now. So if you haven't checked him out, go do that. Um, in his video, he basically describes a method of looting a monument 100% uh, of the time without ever getting mining fatigued. And this is basically lowering your render distance really small from really far away. So you never let the monument fully render in and you never let the elder guardians render in so they can't mining fatigue you. They're essentially frozen. Um, Sometimes it's not the best idea to do this in case you need to look for more shipwrecks or ravines or things um, to lower your render distance from so far away. So in this example, I'm using a method that uh, I've had pretty good success with. I'm basically going to a very specific position in a specific chunk, and I save the iron I get from a shipwreck um, and spend as much time as I can in this position. Um, this allows the Elder Guardian to sometimes swim away from me, and he'll basically unload and freeze himself. Before crossing this chunk boundary, um, I'm changing my render distance from 5 to 3. And this is uh, in version 116. This also works for version 114, but the render numbers are all going to be one higher. And I'll explain all these numbers and why this works um, in the explanation after this. Um, but from here, I'm just looting a monument like normal. Um, I prefer to loot the uh, interior positions first because if you mine the first inner positions you can uh, and there's no block below you you can actually swim behind you and look to see if the gold is there um, normally I would just mine this gold and leave at this point but I wanted to show that a minute after entering the monuments range uh, I will in fact never get mining fatigued in this example um, as long as you stay in this chunk boundary which you can see here all of the gold blocks are in this chunk boundary um, you can actually stay here forever and not get mining fatigued so if you lower your render distance from very far away, you can do this 100% of the time. Uh, with this method, it's getting up to maybe 90, 95% of the time, which is pretty good. Um, and I'll switch game modes here and just show you that the Elder Guardian is in fact up here. This is the one we're worried about. And he is far uh, away from me in this unloaded chunk. So he'll never mining fatigue me because he's not loaded in. Um, yeah, so with that, we'll go on to the blaze fight example. So if you're anything like me, uh, sometimes you have difficulties fighting um, blazes in an open spawner. Um, sometimes there are gas or blazes shooting you from really far away. It can get a little bit crazy. Um, you can set your render distance to the minimum, which in 116 is 3. And honestly, you don't have to worry about any of that. So seems a little cheaty, but uh, as of right now, in the rules, render distance manipulation is fine. Um, this might get changed in the future, but using this method, um, you'll see little visual glitches, but all you have to do is worry about the blazes and the spawner. Your fight gets much easier. This last technique is called pearl hanging, and uh, it's an idea that Sharpie has been a big advocate for for a while. Um, he may have a video on this. If he does, I will link it. Um, the basic idea is that instead of uh, freezing mobs outside of our render distance, we're going to freeze an item. In this case, we're going to freeze uh, a thrown pearl. So in this example, let's say you... Uh, come to the nether, you find a bastion close by, you get a bunch of pearls and obsidian. Um, let's say you want to do educated travel, and so what you can actually do is throw an extra pearl, if you have one, towards your portal, and immediately lower your render distance to the minimum, which in 116 is going to be 3. Um, after this, if you're far enough away, um, your pearl will essentially be frozen near the portal, and you can continue looking for a fortress. Um, you can periodically raise your dis render distance up as long as it isn't um, going to render in the pearl that you've just thrown. 
Once you get far enough away, you can render it higher up, find a fortress. Once you're done with the fortress, um, you can raise your render distance all the way back up, which will load in the chunk near your portal, and your ender pearl will hit the ground, and you'll teleport back, and you can get out of the nether and into educated travel. So those are just a few examples of things you can do with render distance manipulation. Um, there's more to elaborate on all those strategies, and there's more you can do with this stuff, but I wanted to mainly talk about this video explaining uh, why this happens and connecting the player render distance to mob behavior. Um, in this world, I've spawned in a bunch of gas in a glass box because um, they're mobs that are fairly easy to see moving around. Um, I've turned on chunk boundaries and labeled this first chunk in red as chunk number one. And then I've uh, gone ahead and labeled a bunch of chunks outside of this um, with different colors based on their chunk number from this original chunk. Um, we see that if we play around with our render distance settings, um, if we turn it to the minimum render distance, um, this basically tells the game to render in our current chunk and all the neighboring chunks, including the diagonals. So the gas are still moving around. Um, if we go back to chunk number three here by reference, we can see the gas have stopped moving, and this is essentially because they are unloaded now. Um, the game still knows that they're there, and so it uh, there is a gas in this location, in this chunk, that's saved, but it's essentially not allowed to do anything. So uh, gas or blazes aren't allowed to shoot you, and Elder Guardians would not be allowed to mining fatigue you from here. Uh, but if we move ahead into this chunk, again, they start moving around. That's because they are still saved and loaded there. Um, but now if we move in this chunk, again, they're unloaded. So I've been referring to a minimum render distance setting in 116. That's render distance 3. It's because both render distance 2 and 3 actually have the same behavior, where one two chunks away from us um, are not loaded in. So render distance 3 in chunk 3 actually means these mobs are not loaded in. Um, we can experiment even more. Um, you'll see the gas move around just a tiny bit as they're kind of like settling in, but um, they're essentially still not allowed to act. Um, we could do this uh, one more render distance and go to four, uh, and we can see the gas start to move, obviously. If we move back one more chunk into chunk number four, we can see the gas um, stop moving. They'll kind of settle in as they move around, but again, they're unloaded at chunk number four. And so we keep doing this and basically make a table of frozen mob chunk versus our render distance. And conveniently, in 1.16, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So as I go to chunk number five here, the gas will again stop moving. So um, basically, our table is a one-to-one -one ratio of render distance to the chunk that we want the mobs to be frozen in. Um, and we could also do this test on 1.14, and we'll see slightly different behavior. So here we are in version 114. This is uh, 1.14 Optifine, but this also works in vanilla 114 as well. Um, here at the chunk ahead of me, I have these gas again. I am currently on render distance two. And so one chunk away from me is always loaded, but if we go back by one chunk, we can see the gas have stopped. In 114, all of the render distances um, compared to 116 are actually just one higher. So in this chunk, which is chunk three in 116, um, we can actually see that at render distance four, the gas are still frozen. So essentially the minimum render distance, which is the render distance that really matters, um, is render distance four in 114. So if you're looting an ocean monument in 116, I'd recommend going to three. If you're doing this in 114, I'd recommend going to four because the behavior is the same. Um, so of course, as soon as we go up one render distance, we can see um, the gas start to move. And so we go back to this chunk and now the gas freeze again. And we can repeat this and make the same table we did for 116 before. And we'll see that it's also one to one ratio, but it's just um, one different. So that explains the behavior of gas, um, blazes, and even ender pearls when we lower our render distance and move away from those entities. But now I want to focus on uh, monuments and elder guardians. Um, and Ninja Brain did a great job of explaining this in his video, but I'm going to be explaining this from the perspective of the strategy um, I've been using and having decent success with. Um, this monument I have in front of me is the same one I used in my first video. We have the positions of the four uh, possible hidden gold block sections in the back here with the pink wool representing where you doors. Um, and you'll notice these positions are always going to be uh, within this back chunk boundary. Um, so all four of these positions, um, the gold blocks are always going to be in this back chunk boundary. So we should only be worried about where the mining fatigue 
and render distance is going to affect mobs from these chunks and back. Um, there are always three Elder Guardians in every uh, monument. There's going to be one at the very top section here. He doesn't have much room to move around. And there's always going to be two Elder Guardians, one in the left wing and one in the right. Um, these ones can be in kind of a few different locations, but they should never really be closer to the back than the top Elder Guardian. Um, in fact, the left and right wing Elder Guardians, if we have our render distance set to the minimum, they should never be close enough to ever mining fatigue us when we're dealing with these gold blocks. And so this example, um, I have also put on chunk boundaries, and I've labeled the chunks um, of interest here in terms of the top Elder Guardian. So monuments will always spawn in the center of these four chunks. Um, the, the center point will always be down the center of the monument. And so this Elder Guardian is going to be, uh, unfortunately for us, randomly in one of these four chunks um, if he is loaded in. If this Elder Guardian is not loaded in, he'll obviously never mining fatigue us. But if he is loaded in, we don't actually know which one of these four chunks in the top he's going to be in. Um, there's two chunks in front and there's two in back. If he's in this position, he'll be in um, what I've labeled here as chunk two. Um, if we're in chunk three and we have render distance of three, um, he's actually in range to mine fatigue us because he is loaded in. If he randomly decides to swim to that back chunk in chunk number one, he'll be unloaded and we can spend as much time here with these gold blocks as we want. Um, so in this world, I've also um, decided to show the range of the Elder Guardian mining fatigue. So I'll up the render distance a bit, but this glass here represents... Um, the 50 block range this Elder Guardian can potentially reach in order to mining fatigue a player. Um, so that 50 block range I've drawn out is from this very closest position. If the Elder Guardian happens to swim up here and he's loaded in, um, he has a spherical 50 block range in Euclidean distance where he can affect mining fatigue on the player. So it's actually fairly far. Um, I haven't shown the entire sphere because it's a lot, but I've built out the section that matters, and uh, it affects players from pretty far away. So basically, there are three different strategies you can take when approaching a monument. If you're really far away, let's say over 20 render distance away, and you have not let um, the monument render in from this far, as you're approaching it, you can continuously lower your render distance um, until you just barely see a corner of it, and then continuously lower it more and more. Um, you can, again, always lower it to three um, as you're approaching the entire monument, but it's difficult to see anything. You can't see anything useful like shipwrecks or ravines. So um, a method to guarantee 100% loot it is to continuously lower your render distance. And when you get to this position, when you're on minimum render distance, you will never be mining fatigued. Um, a second way of doing this is, of course, just letting the um, keeping your render distance really high, letting the monument load in. And then when you're right to this position, now you set your render distance to three, which ignores the left and right guardians, and you only have to deal with the top guardian. Um, there's also a chance when you do this that the elder guardian is going to randomly be in one of the two front sides, and so he won't affect you anyway, ever. Um, but if you lose this 50-50 chance and the elder guardian is in one of the back sections like he is now, um, he will be able to mining fatigue you once every 60 seconds. And so you'll have to get lucky. Um, the method when you're really, really far away has 100% success rate. If you change your render distance when you approach the monument really close, um, it's about a 75% success rate, I think. So um, my new strategy is basically when I get... Um, to this range, just outside the um, Elder Guardian's Mining Fatigue range, I set my render distance to 5, as you saw in the example. Now I'm in chunk number 5, and I sit right here, outside of the Elder Guardian's Mining Fatigue range, and outside of all of the Guardians. And I spend time here crafting my tools from the shipwreck, getting flint and steel, stuff like that. And what this is essentially doing, is if I have my render distance at 5, and I am in chunk 5, these chunks in the back are loaded, and these chunks in the front are not. So the Elder Guardian, if it's up here, it has a chance to swim to the front ones and unload itself. Um, the Elder Guardian basically um, swims in a random direction and changes sides once every 30 seconds, I've found from testing. So if I'm spending about 30 seconds getting tools and things, 
Um, I have a chance, a decent chance for the Elder Guardian to swim to the front, unload himself, and then from here, once I'm done making my tools in chunk number five, um, I swim up and then I change my render distance down to the minimum three, and then I continue looting them up. So this I found instead of just a 75% success rate has maybe 90 or 95%. Um, you still have to be kind of quick and get kind of lucky, but um, it's worked for me really well so far. All right, well, that's it for the explanation. Um, I do have a couple tips and tricks this time, mainly just things to look out for when you're doing render distance manipulation. Um, this first one I want to talk about is spawn chunks. Um, in green here for the seed, I have the spawn chunk location. Um, and in yellow, I have what's called the spawn chunks for this world. Um, the yellow box is a nine by nine chunk area around the spawn chunk where essentially chunks are always permanently ticking and entities are allowed to act freely. Um, this is so if you die and respawn, uh, the game doesn't have to like load everything right away. You can just respawn. So what ends up happening is if there is a monument within this yellow box from spawn, the elder guardians will always be allowed to mining fatigue you regardless of what your render distance is. So it's kind of tough, but, uh, you won't have this yellow indicator in a random seed run, but from this corner to that corner is about 200 blocks. So essentially, if there's a monument within a 200 block radius of your spawn, you need to be pretty worried about the Elder Guardians mining fatiguing you, um, even through render distance. So the last trick for the video I have is a new um, looting monument route. Um, it's not crazy faster than the previous one, so don't get too excited, but um, previously, um, we would always approach the monuments from the back left direction or the back right direction, which means you can swim through these archways and kind of avoid um, the guardians. Uh, but now if you're approaching from the back, which I do a lot of the time now, um, what you can actually do is swim up in the middle and dig through the monument from this way. Um, it's technically slightly faster on average, but a lot more risky. So I don't know if I would use it too much, but you can potentially place a door here, mine these two blocks, grab your door and then um, swim in. Um, if you're lucky, you can see all four of the hidden gold block positions right away. In this case, um, if it's in one of the middle left or middle right positions, you'll see it right away and you can actually um, swim in and start um, mining from underneath right away. Um, it's a lot more risky because you have a lot more guardians to deal with. So you might have to place multiple doors and things, um, but it is technically slightly faster on average. Um, there are a couple more things that can happen though. If it's not in one of the two middle positions and you swim up here, mine your two blocks in and your one block for the door. Um, if it's not in the middle positions, you'll get something like this. There will be a floor. If you're lucky, you'll see the um, far right or far left position right away and you could go mine these gold blocks. If you're unlucky and it's in the far position, um, you'll have to dig down one additional block if you don't see it right away. So you can come in here, again, mine your blocks. Um, if you don't see anything right away and you just see this floor, you'll have to mine one block down. And then when you go to this floor, you'll either see it on the left or the right. Um, so again, a little riskier strategy, but um, technically faster route. So uh, yeah, that's it for the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck using uh, render distance manipulation.